How to use Jira for sprint planning. Efficient sprint planning with Jira. Hello everyone and welcome back. Now in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can get started with efficient sprint planning using Jira. And sprint planning in itself entails a time blocking method which allows you to plan and track everything within a certain time period with efficient scrum management of your daily, daily tasks and workflow management. So this is just like a general overview of what your sprint planning looks like. This is where our work is going to lie which is project vision release planning and then your sprint planning then it just becomes implementation and then it becomes like a loop so to get started simply head on over into jira and sign up once you do that, you're just going to proceed over here and we're going to get started with our Jira account. Once done, we're just going to click on continue and you just need your email address to sign up. There is no, you know, card needed or any type of payment needed for you to get started with Jira and its sprint planning. So we're going to head on over and then once we have set up our basics, we are just going to move forward and we're going to go with Scrum because obviously we want to schedule and prioritize and plan our sprints using Scrum or framework. So we're going to select that from here. Don't select project management because that's what a lot of people do select by default. And then we're going to name our project. So this is going to be our Alpine project. And then we're just going to click on get started. After that, you're going to choose what types of work do you need. So this includes tasks, features, stories, bugs, and assets. Now, bugs and stories are usually things that are something you're going to find in software development. So depending on what type of scrum management or workflow you have, you're going to select what is relevant, whether a file, image, or video is necessary for you or not. These things are going to become the basic framework for your project manager. So make sure to actually correctly select these because a lot of people just select them and you don't pay too, atten too much attention to it because uh, they just think, oh, whatever, I'll change this later, but it can become a, a bit tedious to do that. So I'm going to go with bugs, stories, tasks, and features, and then click on next. And then you're going to choose how you want to track your work, ideas, to do's, in progress, in review, and done. And you're going to change these if you want. I'm going to proceed with the default ones because I do find them to work fine for me. And once we do that, we're going to proceed on to our next step within our scrum manager. So let's just move on and build our Atlassian dashboard with Shira. And keep in mind, if you already have an Atlassian account, you can sign up with that account for Jira as well. You don't need to create a brand new separate account. That is just for Jira. And once we've done that, we're going to wait a few seconds for our dashboard so that we can use Jira to its fullest. Now, once our basic project has been created, this is what it's going to look like. Starting off, you're going to plan your sprint. So you can drag work items from your backlog section or create new ones to plan the work for the sprint. And you can select the sprint when you're ready. You guys can see you can describe what needs to be done or generate work items from Confluence or Loom. You guys can see that you can link your Confluence content or Loom videos over here to be able to plan your sprint. Then you have your backlog over here. So on the left, you also have a summary and you have your board, calendar, timeline, pages, and forms. Starting off, you're going to click on over here and you can plan your first sprint and then fill up your backlog. And then you can click on start sprint simply by clicking on start sprint. Then you can view your progress at a glance in your board view. And then after that, you can stay on top of deadlines with your visual dependencies and your calendar views. So this is what your timeline view is going to look like. And then you have centralized documentations as well. So within your pages section, you can add all of your documentation, build your own knowledge base for your own employees so everyone can stay ahead with their tasks. And then once done, you have your forms. Here is where any of your tickets are going to be added. So if there are ticket requests that you need to manage or improvements that you need to manage, then you can simply add those requests over here in the form of a form. And whenever someone submits a form, you would be able to use that. And just like so, we're going to close our quick start and get started with our actual backlog. Starting off, we're going to proceed with adding what needs to be done. So we need to create a page for task items in Alpine, Alpine apps. Then we need to maybe review emoji, um, emoji text options 
in commands in app and then after that so on and so forth we can add those task items now whenever you're adding a task item you guys will see on the right you can add any apps that are related and then you can choose whether this is an idea or if this is to improve a work item you can also click on automation to add automations and we can improve the description link to confluence content summarize content as well as suggest child work items and link similar work items then below that you have your priority, any parent task, labels, team, start date, sprint, story point estimate. Now your story point estimates are going to measure the complexity of your tasks. You can choose the development of this so you can link a certain branch as well and create a commit as well. And then you have your reporter and automation. Now so on and so forth, you're going to start adding your backlog. Obviously your backlog is going to serve as your larger hierarchy or your larger section of tasks and you're going to move that within your sprints so let's say after that we also need to create a registration page so on and so forth we can add more tasks now keep in mind we can also do this in the form of a whiteboard so you can go into your confluence whiteboard and use whiteboards within confluence which is a integrated jira pro i mean a atlassian product so you can try that out as well when you're using jira now we're just going to close this out and we're going to click on create sprint and you can build a secondary sprint as well just like that but i'm going to delete this because we haven't even started with our first one now this is my backlog and if I drag items into sprint 1, they will be added into sprint 1 just like so. Once done, you guys can see this is my sprint. Currently it's going to be in a passive state because there are no dates added. So I'm going to click on dates and then we have our scrum sprint 1. Then within this I'm going to choose my start date and my end date for this particular sprint. Then the sprint goal is going to be added to make our Alpine app ready for demo launch. And then I'm going to click on update. Once I do that, it has three work items and I can proceed with clicking on start sprint. So then I can just click on start over here and this sprint will be added into our board. Now, when you do this, you might say, hey, what's the purpose of this? The reason why you're doing this is that this allows you to have a really efficient workflow. So when your items are added to the board, if anything is in progress, it's being done, it's in review, it's going to be added like this. On your top right, you will find your sprint details and your group. You can group these by assigning your subtasks and then on the right side, you can see your sprint insights. This allows you to view your work items for retentions as well as estimates to track your progress. And on the right, you can also change your view settings and start stand up. So just like so, you can actually log in your time as well. Now, once your items are being, you know, in progress and they are done, you can move them into these done categories or even if an item is not done yet you can click on complete sprint and it's going to directly move your sprint into completed and you guys will see it does notify you you have one open work item open work item includes everything from any other column and you can move your open work items into a new sprint or a backlog so if this is still open and i know that i need to complete this within the next sprint i can add that into the next one or if it's complete i can mark it as complete then click on complete sprint and just like that you are able to build your own sprint workflow management with jira now the pricing for this is really decent because jira is available for free you have unlimited goals and projects you can add and you can add upwards of 10 users in the free version. Their standard is $7.53, whereas the premium is $13.53. And in the standard, it also includes external collaboration and more automations. And with their premium, you get access to 24-7 support for critical issues, automations, as well as unlimited storage. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe.